Hi, I'm Connie. In this video, I want to talk to you about this, the Yoshimoto Cube, and show you how to make it. It's a lovely object. You can fold it forever, repeating the same few moves in a cycle, but never going back on yourself. You may recognise the motion from the popular Infinity Cube. This, however, is just two of these fitted together. Technically, the Yoshimoto Cube refers to both of these together. The Yoshimoto Cube, as its name suggests, was invented by Naoki Yoshimoto in 1971. He invented it when looking at different ways to split the volume of a cube in half. It was first introduced in an exhibition called From Cube to Space in 1972. Each of the two parts of the Yoshimoto cube, when folded up, can form either a cube or this, which is a stellated rhombic dodecahedron, also known as Escher's solid. Escher was a Dutch artist. Much of his work was mathematically inspired, despite him having no mathematical training beyond school. The stellated rhombic dodecahedron is also called Escher's solid, as it appeared in his artwork. It first appeared in his piece Waterfall in 1961. So this is a stellated rhombic dodecahedron. Here is a rhombic dodecahedron. A good way to think about stellation is to first look at it in two dimensions. The thing that might seem most familiar to stellate is a pentagon. If we take a pentagon and we extend the sides of the pentagon until they meet at a point, we get a star, hence the word stellation. So to get the star from the pentagon, we've added the five triangles when we've extended the lines, just as here we've added 12 little pyramids. And it's the same principle, but instead of extending the lines, we've extended the faces until they meet to form a pyramid on each face of the rhombic dodecahedron. It has 48 faces, 72 edges, and 26 vertices. One of the coolest things about Escher's solid, as well as its wonderful appearance, is it's a space-filling polyhedron. So we can kind of tessellate them in three dimensions uh, and tile space. In a moment, I will show you the steps to make it, starting from the nets. Briefly before that, I would like to talk about how we will create the nets from looking at the solid and thinking about the modules. Each module of the Yoshimoto cube is part of a dissection of the cube in which every line splitting it in half goes through the centre. It creates this pleasing way that the two can fit together to form a cube. To create the net for the module, we need to know the layout of the squares and the triangles and also the lengths of their sides. We can work out the layout by looking at it and imagining unfolding it. And to find the lengths, in this case, we can use Pythagoras' theorem, looking at the lengths of the squares and this diagonal here, as we know that all the lines go through the centre. You can find the nets in the description. OK, so let's get to making it. Here are the nets for the modules. Each Yoshimoto cube is made of eight of these modules, and so you'll need two sheets of paper, each with four nets. You could also make a giant one, putting one net on a page and having eight pages. I found paper is better for the smaller size, particularly if you want to make two and fit them together. The squares down the side are for joining the modules together. The first step is to cut out each net accurately. We also need to cut out the domino shaped joining pieces which we will use later. Note that each one is two squares joined together along a side. You don't want to cut down the middle. Next, we have to fold each net. More accurate folds will make a better looking final Yoshimoto cube, and it is especially important if you wish to make two parts which fit together. You can fold freehand or use a ruler as a guide, and I recommend running either a ruler or your nail over the crease to make sure it's nice and crisp. It doesn't matter if you fold so the printed part is on the inside or outside, it just depends whether you prefer to have the lines on the final shape. 
Note that as the module is not convex, there are a few folds that need to go the other way and folding them in the correct direction now will make the module come together much more easily when we glue it. Alternatively, you can fold along these lines in both directions. Here is a net with these lines coloured in red. Now that we've folded all the nets, we need to stick each one together. This labelled net shows which flap should be stuck to which face. The order of the letters should match the order in the video. Although the order doesn't matter, I find it easiest to stick down the final square last, as it has no flaps. A glue stick will work perfectly well here. I sometimes use a glue stick and sometimes use liquid glue. It doesn't matter which. So once we've made the eight modules, it's time to attach them together. We'll attach each piece by gluing these double square pieces over the top, as you can hopefully see on the model. And the first ones we're going to attach is we're just going to attach them into four pairs. So you just take one of the double square domino pieces, make sure it folds both ways nicely so that the finished model folds nicely and then glue on one side and carefully line it up with the squares on the faces. And you can see that each of these two pieces touches on two edges when they're arranged like this. And so we do the same for the other three pairs as well. Next, we're going to connect two of our pairs together to make a connected four. So we'll be adding each of these two connections here when we create our fours. And the top and bottom ones, we've already made the connections. So we want to place it with all of the top pieces being open so the connections are at the sides and then add our extra piece over the top to connect the two pairs so that it looks something like this. And repeat to get the second four. So now we want to connect our two fours. If we compare to the model, we see we've already added all of these connections and it's these last two on the top that we need to add now to complete the model. So we connect these two together and these two together in the same way as before, gluing one of these pieces over the top as accurately as possible. Then all we need to do is carefully attach the final piece and then it will be finished. And there we have it, the finished Yoshimoto cube. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. I also have an Instagram where I post lots of my mathematical arts and crafts creations. Uh, so consider following me at Conihedra if you'd like to see more of them. Thank you. Bye.